G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. Today is the first of what will be a series of videos explaining about electricity, electronics, especially for those of you who want to look at getting your ham ticket so that you can legally use some of the FPV frequencies we have which are limited to ham ticket holders and that can open up a whole new world of FPV and other things if you're a model fly. So I'm going to get started today with some basic electrical theory because you've got to build the basics before I can teach you the more exciting bits like how semiconductors work and radio frequencies and stuff. So we're going to look at the real fundamental basics and that is what is electricity? I mean we've all got a pretty good idea of what electricity is. You know you fl fl flick a switch and a light comes on or you put a battery in a torch and the light comes well flashlight if you're in America and the light comes on. It's all pretty simple stuff isn't it? But you know we need to look at some of the slightly deeper aspects so that we can understand things later on. So I'm going to just look at some terms first and I'm going to try and draw some analogies because I believe analogies are the best way to explain things that are possibly quite complex. We can go into the maths and all the physics but really you know that won't really explain how stuff works in a common sense way. So I'm going to make it as simple as possible. The usual disclaimer I'm sorry if some of the perfectionists out there think I've made it too simple but hey this isn't for you this is for the people who just want to know how stuff works. So let's get going righto. Electricity is the flow of electrons it's as simple as that the flow of electrons nothing uh, more complicated and when we're dealing with electricity like anything we have to be able to measure some of the aspects of electricity you know we know it's there how do we measure like for example if you're dealing with physical objects you have a height and a width and in this case a diameter all those things you can measure. So how do we measure the, the quantities of electricity? It's quite simple. We have a voltage. Voltage is the equivalent in, in physical terms of pressure. Now the more voltage the higher the pressure and that's the pressure that is pushing electrons along through our conductor. And I'll get on to conductors and insulators in a moment but voltage is what pushes the electrons along and creates the flow of electricity. It's as simple as that. Just like in a water system you need pressure, water pressure, to push water through pipes to create flow. And the analogy I like to draw is, let's say you've got a car that's broken down and you want to make it move. You've got to apply pressure to the back of the car with your hands to push the car along. No pressure, no movement, nothing happens. That's the same with us, no voltage, no electricity flows, simple as that. But once we've got movement, we need to measure how much electricity is flowing, how many electrons, which are the things moving, are passing a given spot at a particular point in time. That's where the current comes in. The current, like the current of a river or a stream, is the flow of electricity. Right? So once we've applied some pressure uh, to a conductor we're going to get some flow. Electricity will travel along and we measure that in amps and the, the symbol for volts is V, who'd have thought? Symbol for amps or amperes, which is the full word, is A. Again, who'd have thought? Um, and that gives us the flow. Now I made a note here on a piece of paper because we're talking about the flow of electrons. How many electrons do flow through a conductor and how many electrons does one amp represent? Well believe it or not one amp is the passage of one coulomb of charge in one second. Now I told you that this science stuff gets pretty damn boring pretty quickly. I'm not going to you know I'm going to tell you what a coulomb is. What's a coulomb? Well it's a technical term. It means 6.2 times 10 to the power, I'll write that down, 6.2 times 10 to the power of 18 because it's a very big number. I think it's 6.242 or something times 10 to the power of 18. So that's 6.242 with 18 zeros after it. Um, or it's actually 6, yeah, 6 blah 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 with, um, you know what 10 to the power of 18 is. I won't explain it, but it's basically 6 with, six with 18 zeros after it. It's a hugely, massively, fantastically large number. That's the number of electrons that have to flow past a particular point in the circuit before we have what we call an amp of current flow. It's a huge number of electrons because the electrons are, are really small, they're tiny. You can't see them. They are one of the basic components of matter. Um, so, and by the way, never trust atoms. They make up everything. Thank you, Big Bang Theory. Um, but there you go. That's the science we're not going to really bother with because no one gives a rat's ass how many electrons are flowing past. Well, that's not a very good rubber, is it? No one gives a rat's ass how many electrons are flowing past. My whiteboard needs replacement. Flowing past a point at any given time. But we just need to know that you can measure it. And the unit of measure is an amp. Now let's look at something else. Let's look at resistance. And resistance is kind of self-explanatory. We've got our car. We've applied pressure to the back of it. It starts moving. The rate at which it moves, the number of meters per second or whatever, that is the flow. And now we have something else. Because if we take a conductor and we apply pressure to it, current will flow. But if we remove the pressure or we stop pushing our car, the car will stop and the current will stop. Why is that? What's going on here? Well. There is a resistance to the flow of electricity 
Everything has a resistance. Superconductors accepted. I'm not going to go into superconductors because we don't really have any of those except at sub-zero temperatures or near zero temperatures. So for the sake of this discussion, there's no such thing as a superconductor, but there is. Anyway, we're pushing along. Electricity is being pushed along. The voltage is pushing the electrons, producing a current flow. But there is a resistance that opposes that flow. This is like the, the resistance you feel when you're pushing on a car. You can push it up to, say, five miles an hour and you let it go and it'll coast to a halt. The resistance slows it down and stops it. It's the rolling resistance of the tyres, it's wind resistance, all those things have resistance. In the case of our electrical systems, the resistance is something we measure in ohms, and that's a measure of resistance. That tells us how much resistance there is to the flow of current or flow of current produced by the voltage pressure. And ohms is indicated by the omega symbol. Who'd have thought? So there you go. These are the basic things that control the flow of electricity in a circuit. It's really simple. So let's draw a little circuit. Let's say we have a battery here, and a battery is usually drawn like this. Ta -da! And we have a resistor, which is drawn like that as a squiggle. There you go. You've got a voltage on the battery. There'll be a, uh, a voltage across here. It might be, say, 1 volt, 1V. As you can, I'll draw, make sure you can see that's a 1, 1 volt. And let's say this resistor here is 1 ohm because ohms are a measure of resistance, then we can do some simple maths. If you go and look at my Ohm's Law video, which I'll link to in the description of this video, it'll tell you how we calculate the current. But I can tell you because I have a brain like a supercomputer, and I can calculate what the current's going to be. It's going to be 1 amp. How's that? Pretty quick, isn't it? Amazing, yes. So we can. all these things are related, and there are formulas we can use. Look at my Ohm's Law video to find out what those formulas are, how we calculate them. And it also talks about power because power is another thing. All this pushing and resisting and things obviously involves a bit of power. Just as when you push a car, you get pretty hot and sweaty. The, the amount of heat and sweat you generate is roughly equivalent to the amount of power you're pushing into that, putting into pushing that vehicle. So we can also look at power. But I wanted in this video to keep it short. All these videos will be fairly short because I can see eyes glazing over already. When I said coulombs in 6. 424 or whatever to the power of 18, everyone went to sleep. So that's why these are short. Wake up now, we're about to finish. So there you go. These are the basis, basic building blocks of all our electrical stuff, the understanding of them. In the next video, I'm going to take it a bit further. I'm going to talk about conductivity. I'm going to talk about resist resistivity. No, I'm going to do it now. Hang on. We'll, we'll, while we're here, I'll make this video a little bit longer because I know you all want to know. Um, how, do, how does electricity flow? Well, let's say we've got some atoms in a material and it's a conductor and atoms have electrons on them as you know little electrons which are spinning around in an orbit like this should have done the electrons another color let's do them blue because blue is traditionally an electron color here we go these are the electrons they probably won't even show up on camera how's that okay so here we go when we have a charge let's say we have a battery and we have the negative and that's usually denoted by this negative and over here we have positive Right, now negative means we have a surplus of electrons. That's why it's negative. There's too many electrons. So the electrons here will try and reach, over here we have a shortage of electrons. So nature always likes to balance. Surpluses flow into deficits and you get a balance. That's the way nature works. So the extra electrons that are on here because of our battery or our generator or whatever's producing the, the, the voltage want to flow through this conductor to there. So what do they do? Well, they sit around here, we've got these extra extra electrons, they will jump. So this one will jump to there, and in doing so, it will displace that one to there, which will displace that one to there, and displace that one to there. So this one will then jump over here. So you can see it's a bit like those Newton's cradles, you know, the little things with the balls hanging, and you let one go, and it goes ping, and the one drops out the other side. It's not the same one that you let go, but it comes out almost instantly, because it's just that um, transfer of energy through, and that's how electricity flows through a conductor which means that although electricity travels very, very quickly, you know, when I mean, you turn the light switch on, bing, the light's going, the electrons themselves don't always travel nearly so fast. They don't have to, because they're just taking, they're just pushing stuff out the other end. Imagine a big glass ball full of ping pong balls, and you start pushing ping pong balls in one end, well, they start falling out the other end just as quickly as you start pushing them in. As soon as you push the first one in, the one at the other end drops out. But the one you've actually pushed in may not make it to the end for quite a long time. And that's how the flow of electricity works. Now, in an insulator, Let's talk about insulators. Conductors, they're things like copper and aluminium or aluminum if you're in America. They are graphene. All these things conduct electricity because they have, these electrons here are quite happy to jump along. They don't mind jumping from one atom to another. Now, in the case of an insulator, a bit of a different situation here. We find that we have our atoms, like so, 
and they do have electrons. But these electrons are so firmly, tightly bound to the atoms, they just don't want to move. They don't want to go anywhere. So when you try and uh, when you apply pressure to try and push electrons in here, now these go, nah, not having it. This one's staying where it is. So if this one can't displace that electron, which displaces that one, which um, displaces that one and so forth, then no current will flow. Even if you raise the pressure right up, the current will just not flow because the electrons aren't playing game. That's why we have insulators like most plastics, um, glass, at room temperature is an insulator. It's not when it gets hot, but it is at room temperature. And oh, you know, a whole lot of other stuff, um, Teflon, many, many insulators in the world out there. And so heat shrink is an insulator. These ones have a more tightly bound electron, so it doesn't actually allow the ping pong balls to move through the tube. They, they're stuck, they're glued in place. So that's why we have insulators and uh, conductors are the exact opposite. They allow the easy flow of electrons. So this has a very, very high resistance to the flow of electricity, and a conductor has a low resistance to electricity. In a later video, I'll be talking about semiconductors. And that, believe it or not, is something that also has a very low resistance to electricity, but only in one direction. Isn't that cool? So you can push the ping pong balls out that way, but you can't push them back this way. And that makes for our diodes, our transistors, our silicon chips, all that sort of stuff made from semiconductors. That's probably one of the most interesting videos I'll be doing, but there you go. The very basics, simple, hopefully it's short enough, hopefully you understand it. If you don't, then ask some questions. What I'm going to do with these videos is I'm going to collect up all the questions that people have asked. I'm going to do a follow-up, a Q&A video, trying to explain what people have asked. Because if you've asked about a video, chances are someone else has the same question, but they've just been a little bit too shy to say. Um, didn't want to show that perhaps they didn't know. There you go. So stay tuned for that. In the meantime, thank you for watching. I will now get on with the next video, which since we've done insulators and uh, conductors, will probably be semiconductors. And that's the interesting one. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.